System software is designed so a computer system can run smoothly and be well maintained. The main piece of system software is the operating system, or OS for short. This chapter will cover all of the purposes and main features of an operating system. Some good examples of an operating system could be Windows, for example Windows 10, OS X for Apple desktop computers, and iOS or Android for iPhones and Android phones. So what exactly are the main features of an operating system? I'll just outline them briefly here and go into them in more detail in their own sections. So, main functions are to manage hardware devices, to communicate with peripherals or other devices, give the user an interface, provide a platform for programs to run on, allow multitasking, manage files and storage, and also user accounts. So we'll start with hardware control. The operating system uses something called drivers to communicate with internal hardware and peripherals. Peripherals are other devices that you plug into your computer. Every piece of hardware has its own driver which lets the operating system understand how it works properly. Drivers are installed to match the device by the operating system. The drivers can be updated, often fixing bugs or to add new features to them. One of the more obvious and well-known features is a user interface. This allows the user to control the computer more easily as it often has graphics and icons to click on which are easier to understand than writing your own commands. Software designers try to make the operating system visual, interactive and intuitive. This means the user can easily uh, find things in a sensible, logical place and also learn how to do things more easily. Graphical user interfaces can be point and click or can also be touchscreen based. Operating systems can still be command line based where you type in commands to complete tasks. These use a lot less CPU and RAM power, but require specialist knowledge to use them. One of the main and most important functions of an operating system is to manage the resources of the computer. The operating system manages the memory and the CPU to optimise performance for your use. In other words, this makes it easier and better to use. Memory management stops applications in memory from interfering with each other which improves efficiency, making it run faster, and security, because you can't have one program editing the code of another. The operating system moves programs so that, that you are actually using into RAM memory at that time. The operating system also prioritizes or schedules tasks to be completed by the CPU, as only one process can be run at once. The operating system would also be responsible for virtual memory management. Nowadays when you've got so many different files, videos and pictures and music all over your computer, the operating system really helps using file and disk management. The operating system uses file extensions to tell what file type it is and metadata to give more information about each file. The operating system allows folder structure and file names to be used and edited as well as copying and moving files to different folders. The operating system also manages disk space and storage sectors, which we'll learn a little bit more about in the next chapter. There are different types of operating systems. Two of the main ones are single user and multi user operating systems. Think about when you're in school, you don't always sit in one seat, lots of different kids use the same computer. Therefore, you could class the network as a multi user operating system because multiple different users are accessing the same files. However, a lot of the time people will only be accessing their own personal data which would make it a single user operating system. Multi-user operating systems allow lots of people to access the same files at the same time like if you're working in a large company or a bank or when you're in school and you're accessing the computer's shared data drive. Operating systems can control what we call user accounts using username and passwords or mobile phones often use pattern recognition or a key lock to gain entry. 
Sometimes computers use retinal or fingerprint scanning for extra security. Different users can be given different permissions on the network, such as the permission to copy, cut, paste files into different locations, or even as strict as no access whatsoever to particular files where some sort of security or personal data is involved. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please like and subscribe. Bye.